Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be going over the basics of what a Z order is for widgets. So this is another basic concept of widgets and we're gonna go into detail on what exactly the Z order is, what that means and how to utilize it. So for the Z order, you do have the viewport, which controls the order of which all the widgets are in, as well as the Z order for it within widgets themselves, if you're using like a canvas panel. However, they don't correlate. So if you have a Z order in the canvas panel, that doesn't mean it's going to be the Z order of the viewport. So nonetheless, we'll go into more details about that, but let's get into it. Okay, so I've created a demo project for demonstrating the Z order. So I've created two widgets. We have the base widget and then we have the second widget. So within the base widget, we have two buttons, button one and button two within a canvas panel. And then we have button three and button four within the second widget. Now they both have a canvas panel. Yes, I know they both have it. This is for demo purposes. And within the controller, we have the base widget being created. And then we also have the second widget being created. And if we were to hit play, this is kind of what it looks like when they're both at it. So we're going to go into the Z order, how to control that, what it means, etc. As of right now, Let's actually disconnect the second one. We're gonna focus on what a Z order means within a canvas panel. So within a canvas panel, it's quite simple. For the Z order, if you do not specify anything, it will simply use what is within the hierarchy tree. So for example, if I was to change this to 0.5 for here, this will put them to overlap. But you also notice that the green is going behind the pink or purple, or whatever you want to call it. And we'll notice that the one is right above the two. So that means that the two is drawn after the one, therefore putting it in front. So it takes whatever is within that hierarchy tree. However, if I was to get an overlay, and then let's say I grab this overlay. I don't know why I picked overlay of anything. And then we'll move it over. Oops, I didn't mean to grab that. I meant to grab the actual thing. We'll go here. And then let's copy this button and throw that on here. And then uh, do, 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 we'll hit fill. And let's increase its size to something reasonable like this. And then you'll notice that the overlay will actually go over it. So I could technically hide this green if I really wanted to. And it is drawn afterwards. However, if I was to now change this to the order of, oh, not one, let's say negative one, we'll notice it now went behind the green. And this is because by default, everything will go into the Z order of zero, which will then follow the tree. However, if you were to specify any number within the Z order, the highest number would then get put in front. So by doing negative one, obviously zero is higher than negative one. If I was to put this at one, and let's say I put gr the green one as one as well, you'll then notice that While doing that, now the Z order looks a little out of whack. So because I did the one afterwards, you have to hit compile. After hitting compile, it will then logically look correct. So that is also something to pay attention uh, because if you were to change these to like the same number, like we're gonna put this one at one, and then now it looks like it's in front of it when in fact we hit compile and it is not in front. So we're gonna put that back to zero, which will then put it back to its default. So that's just something to pay attention while you're messing around with things, or if you were looking at it and things looked a little weird while you were playing around while listening to this video, whatever the case is. So in a broad sense, zero is the base. That is the default for everything. If you were to set a negative number, that would put it below zero, obviously. And then that would also mean it would go below any other future widget if you were to never specify it within this blueprint. The Z order will only relate 
to this canvas panel. So if you were to have another widget, it does not mean they're going to be using the Z order as well. I'll get into that in a bit because I'm not showing the second widget, so you're not really going to get enough details right now. But just bear in mind that the Z order can change the order of which you see the widgets like we see here. Because as we have three widgets, they're kind of all out of order and you can move them as such. So let's actually put these all back to zero and all back to zero and hit compile. And then now we get the everything back to normal. Let's actually just change this color real quick. There we go. That way it's just a bit easier to see. So you're clear on what is in front and what is behind. So by default, everything will have the Z order of zero and then everything will relate on what is on top of what. So if I move button two on top of button one, we'll now notice that button two is behind button one. So it will default by the hierarchy. Whoever is the highest is going to be behind. So the lower you are, the more in front you are, unless specified otherwise. That would work the same within a overlay as well. So I'm sure if you've noticed before, let's change this to yet another color. Like so. The lower you are, the more in front you would be. So higher number, more in front, lower you are, more in front. And if I was to move this up, we'll then see the yellow button again. And if I was to actually change this to negative one, it will move both the children below. Since the children of an overlay do not get the option to specify as a Z order, they just follow suit with the overlay. So let's move that to zero. Actually, let's delete that as such. And we're gonna move button one back into the alignment one just for the sake of this. And then something else I've done is that within the graph, I also print the Z order when they are clicked. Same goes for the second widget, which will print as well, button four, button three. Actually, these are like backwards. Let me move them down. Okay. So now let's get into what it's like to use multiple widgets. So, so far we've only covered what a Z order is like within a widget. Now, when we go into the viewport, you'll notice that when you are adding the viewport, you may not always click it, but there's this little arrow. If you were to click it, it then specifies the Z order. So before we actually play around with it, we're just gonna add the second widget. So as of right now, everything should have a zero under Z order. Let's just go and confirm everything. Okay, and then we are now going to add it. So after adding it, you also notice widget two, which is the up down buttons. And just to clarify in case you didn't remember, is showing in front of the green and purple. So why is this? The reason why is because the second widget is being created after the first widget. So just like a hierarchy tree, when you are lower or newer, when you are the newer widget, you then get placed in front despite the fact that they have the same Z order. So if I was to change this to negative one, now the green and purple will be in front. So despite being created afterwards, it would then get placed behind. Now, typically I don't see a lot of people doing negatives, so I am using negatives within this, but usually what I see is everyone always starts at zero and then they just go up to one or two or et cetera. Uh, I don't see negatives as often. It's just easier to do negatives sometimes when I'm demonstrating. For these widgets, 
let's say that we are going to put the base widget to a Z order of one. However, when we go to our base widget, let's click on both of these and let's put these as a Z order of negative one. And then we're gonna go into the world and we'll also notice that the green and purple are still in front, despite the fact that when you were in the widget, you put negative one. And that goes back to what I was originally saying is that the Z order within the widget itself would only relate to the canvas panel. So to these buttons, they have their own Z order to this canvas panel, while the viewport itself has its own Z order. While it's the same word, they don't correlate at all. <laughs> so just to kind of clarify on that. And by correlate, I mean you just can't control it within a child of the widget. You would have to change the viewport Z order in order to have it in front of another widget. You would not be able to do that within a child of a canvas panel. So that's just something to clarify. I had somebody ask me a question about it. I just felt like that would be something um, others may not directly hear from videos. So with that, we are able to control whether we want the second widget to be in front or whether we want the first widget to be in front, as well as if they are both zero, the widget that will be in front will always be the one that is last created. Now, what happens if they're both at zero and these are specified to one and one and hit play. And then as you notice, nothing has changed. Just re-emphasizing on the point that even if you change anything on the child, even if they are on the same viewport, Z order, they still won't change what is stacked on what. The only way would be either to change the view, the Z viewport's Z order, or if we were to then create the base widget after like so, and then this puts them on top. And then we can also click and we'll be like, we're on viewport one, zero, one, and zero. So we are able to move the order and that should give you a good idea of what it's the order is within widgets as well as within the viewports themselves. You can control what widgets are stacked onto what, as well as changing the Z order. You can also get the Z order within widgets as well by just either getting the specific widget. And that's how you can control the Z order for widgets within the viewport as well as within themselves. If you found this video to be helpful, join the Discord, join the Patreon, like, subscribe, all the other self promo stuff. The list just gets longer as I keep uh, creating content but if you enjoyed it let me know if there's any other features you'd like me to cover whether they are simple or not so simple just depending on the content that i need to uh, the context of the feature i need to research on i could release it sooner than later it just depends but i'd be happy to get more ideas on what else you guys would like to see so yeah stay tuned